गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू ई लर्निंग मॉड्यूल प्रीपेयर्ड बाय नेताजी सुभाष महाविद्यालय हल्दीबाड़ी कोच बिहार आई एम शामी उलाजी मैं असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट शॉर्ट स्टोरी Prescribed in the syllabus of semester four, LCC four. The name of the short story is "The Nightingale and the Rose," and it has been written by Oscar Wilde. The Nightingale and the Rose is a love story, but the but this love story is different from the other love story. Here, the love is. related with a sacrifice a sacrifice which has been given through the life of a bird a sacrifice that could not be understood by the daughter of the professor here there is irony full of irony what is irony irony is the event of the course or event or situation in which a person expects something but ultimately he meets with completely different things here in this story the boy who wanted to love the girl in spite of having fulfilled the expectation and desire of the girl could not get the love as desired by the boy ultimately the desire and the love and the presentation given by the boy to the girl was upbraided as called it i will try to present the entire story through an animated film let us see the film She said that she would dance with me if I brought her red roses. But in all my garden there is no red rose. From her nest in the oak tree, the nightingale heard him, and she looked out through the leaves and wondered. No red rose in all my garden. Ah, on what little things does happiness depend? I have read all that the wise men have written and all the secrets of philosophy are mine yet for lack of a red rose is my life made wretched here at last is a true lover night after night have i sung to him though i knew him not night after night have i told his story to the stars and now i see him. His hair is dark as a hyacinth blossom, and his lips are as red as the rose of his desire. But passion has made his face like pale ivory, and sorrow has marked his brow. The prince gives a ball tomorrow night, and my love will be of the company. If I bring her a red rose, she will dance with me till dawn. If I bring her a red rose, I shall hold her in my arms, and she will lean her head upon my shoulder, and her hand will be in mine. But there is no red rose in my garden, so I shall sit lonely, and she will pass me by. She will take no notice of me, and my heart will break. Here indeed is the true lover. what i sing of he suffers what is joy to me to him is pain surely love is a wonderful thing it is more precious than jewels the musicians will sit in their gallery and play upon their instruments and my love will dance to the sound of the harp and the violin she will dance so lightly that her feet will not touch the floor 
and the noble lords in their gay dresses will crowd round her. But with me she will not dance, for I have no red rose to give her. Weeping for a red rose. For a red rose? How very silly! <laughs> But the nightingale understood the secret of the student's sorrow, and she sat silent in the oak tree and thought about the mystery of love. Suddenly, she spread her brown wings for flight and rose into the air. She passed through the trees like a shadow. And like a shadow, she sailed across the garden. She flew to a beautiful rose tree. Give me a red rose, and I will sing you my sweetest song. My roses are white, as white as the waves of the sea. And whiter than the snow upon the mountains. But go to my brother, who grows around the old sundial, and perhaps he will give you what you want. So the nightingale flew to the rose tree that grew round the old sundial. Give me a red rose, and I will sing you my sweetest song. My roses are yellow, as yellow as the hair of the mermaid who sits upon a throne. And yellower than the daffodil that blooms in the meadow, before the cutter comes to cut. But go to my brother who grows beneath the student's window, and perhaps he will give you what you want. So the nightingale flew over to the rose tree that was growing beneath the student's window. Give me a red rose, and I, I will sing you my sweetest song. My roses are red. As red as the feet of the dove, and redder than the coral that waves in the ocean. But the winter has chilled my veins, and the frost has killed my buds, and the storm has broken my branches, and I shall have no roses at all this year. One red rose is all I want. Only one red rose. Is there no way by which I can get it? There is a way, but it is so terrible that I dare not tell it to you. Tell it to me. I am not afraid. If you want a red rose, you must build it out of music by moonlight and stain it with your own heart's blood. You must sing to me with your breast against a thorn. All night long you must sing to me. And the thorn must enter your heart, and your life blood must flow into my veins and become mine. Death is a great price to pay for a red rose, and life is very dear to all. It is pleasant to sit in the green wood and to watch the sun in his chariot of gold. And the moon in her chariot of pearl. Love is better than life. And what is the heart of a bird compared to the heart of a man? So she spread her brown wings for flight and rose into the air. She swept over the garden like a shadow, and like a shadow she sailed through the trees. The young student was still lying on the grass where she had left him, and the tears were not yet dry. In his beautiful eyes. Be happy, be happy. You shall have your red rose. I will build it out of music by moonlight, and stain it with my own heart's blood. All that I ask of you in return is that you will be a true lover. For love is wiser than philosophy, 
and mightier than power, though he is mighty. Flame-colored are his wings, and colored like flame is his body. His lips are sweet as honey, and his breath is like frankincense. The student could not understand what the nightingale was saying to him, for he only knew the things that were written down in books. But the oak tree understood and felt sad, for he was very fond of the little nightingale who had built her nest in his branches. Sing me one last song. I shall feel lonely when you're gone. So the nightingale sang to the oak tree, and her voice was like water flowing from a silver jug. She has form. That cannot be denied her. But has she got feeling? I am afraid not. In fact, she is like most artists. She is all style without sincerity. She would not sacrifice herself for others. She thinks merely of music, and everybody knows that the arts are selfish. Still, it must be admitted that she has some beautiful notes in her voice. What a pity it is that they do not mean anything or do any practical good. And when the moon shone in the heavens, the nightingale flew to the rose tree and set her breast against the thorn. All night long she sang with her breast against the thorn, and a cold shining moon leaned down and listened. All night long she sang, and the thorn went deeper and deeper into her breast. She sang first of the birth of love in the heart of a boy and a girl, and on the top branch of the rose tree there blossomed a marvelous rose, petal following petal, as song followed song. Pale was it at first as the mist that hangs over the river, pale as the feet of the morning, and silver as the wings of the dawn, as the shadow of a rose in a mirror of silver as the shadow of a rose in a water pool, so was the rose that blossomed on the top branch of the tree. Press closer, little nightingale, or the day will come before the rose is finished. So the nightingale pressed closer against the thorn, and louder grew her song, for she sang of the birth of passion in the soul of a man and a maid and a delicate glow of pink came into the leaves of the rose, like the glow in the face of the bridegroom when he kisses the lips of the bride. But the thorn had not yet reached her heart, so the rose's heart remained white, for only a nightingale's heart blood can redden the heart of a rose. Press closer, little nightingale, or the day will come before the rose is finished. So the nightingale pressed closer against the thorn, and the thorn touched the heart, and a fierce pain shot through her. Bitter, bitter was the pain, and wilder, wilder grew her song, for she sang of the love that is perfected by death, of the love that dies not in the grave. And the marvelous rose became red, like the rose of the eastern sky. Red were its petals, and red as a ruby was the heart. But the nightingale's voice grew fainter, and her little wings began to beat, and a film came over her eyes. Fainter and fainter grew her song, and she felt something stopping in her throat. Then she gave one last burst of music, the white moon heard it, and she forgot the dawn and stayed in the sky. 
The red rose heard it and it trembled all over with joy and opened its petals to the cold morning air. Echo bore it to her purple cave in the hills and woke the sleeping shepherds from their dreams. It floated through the reeds of the river and they carried its message to sea. Look, look, the rose is finished now. But the nightingale made no answer, for she was lying dead in the long grass with a thorn in her heart. And at noon, the student opened his window and looked out. Why, what a wonderful piece of luck. Here is a red rose. I've never seen any rose like it in all my life. It is so beautiful that I'm sure it has a long Latin name. The student ran to the professor's house with the rose in his hand. Here is the reddest rose in all the world. You will wear it tonight next to your heart as we dance together. It will tell you how I love you. I'm afraid it will not go with my dress. And besides, the Chamberlain's nephew has sent me real jewels. And everybody knows that jewels cost far more than flowers. Well, upon my word, you are very ungrateful. Ungrateful? I will tell you what. You are very rude. And after all, who are you? Only a student. Why? I don't believe you have even got silver buckles to your shoes as the Chamberlain's nephew has. What a silly thing love is. It is not half as useful as logic, for it does not prove anything. And it is always telling one things that are not going to happen, and making one believe things that are not true. In fact, it is quite unpractical. And as in this age, to be practical is everything, I shall go back to philosophy and study metaphysics. So, good boys and girls, hope you have enjoyed the short history, the Nightingale and the Rouge. What we have seen here, that the true love of a boy could not be understood by the girl. And the girl ultimately rejected the true love of the boy. She waited the love and sacrifice in creating the red rose with a handful of jewel or jewelry. Here lies the irony of the story. Thank you, dear boys and girls. Enjoy reading.